Welcome to the Beyond Physio Podcast, where we help you move, excel, and inspire others on your journey to your next level with knowledge and advice from experts and testimonials from our like minded community. Happy. I'm so glad that you're here on our little success story show for Beyond Physio Podcast. Happy, can you tell us about? your activity level because you're part of the F3 community. In fact, you're an OG and you have done a lot. I want to know about what your activity life was like uh, before we met you. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. This is oh, yeah. uh, hardly an OG by any means. Uh, I've been part <laughs> of the F3 community for almost five years. So I think yeah. that puts me in like the middle of things. But, <laughs> but to answer your question directly, you know, before, before F3 for a large period of time, I was pretty sedentary. I didn't have a lot of activity. Really? Uh, I was really active in my teens and my 20s, even into my early, early 30s. But I had a couple of things that kind of derailed me from that. And of course, life gets in the way, kids and so on. Yeah. So I'd actually you know, gained a pretty decent amount of weight and all that really? stuff. So yeah, I was pretty inactive. And not long before, after we moved here in 2019, is when I met the F3, yeah. group, the family. And that's when I really started to get active. Mid-2019, it's been... It's Down to the lower sense. <laughs> I thought you also had like a maybe a powerlifting background, maybe. Yeah, yeah when I was younger. Oh, so yeah. yeah. When, when I got done, I was an athlete in high school. You know, yeah. I played football, baseball, amongst other things. And that kind of transitioned into powerlifting. And when I was back in Michigan, into my like early 20s, mid 20s, I was working with some pretty intense guys. And I started having kind of the, the aches and pains that go along with that. But at the same time, was just getting the early phases of my career. So that started to slow down a little bit. Yeah. And then I just caught that rut where. You do a little bit here and a little bit there, but you never really stay disciplined in your focus. And I tried to train for some half marathons and things like that in my (laughs) late 20s and early 30s, but it all just went away after that. That's awesome. So now before we move on, I I do want to share with our audience Mm -hmm. just the nature of what F3 is about, because it's been a really great community for me coming down to North Carolina. I've met some really super high quality guys, men out there uh, who are family men too, and who are super active like myself. And so I felt like I finally found a community where it's, wow, I belong with these guys. Yeah. So F3 is a blessing. And for those that, that don't know, F3 is a male workout group that was basically built on some s- simple principles, right? It's what we call it the cure for male, middle-aged male loneliness, <laughs> right? Men right. are by nature a group of individual that need community and need the tribe around them historically. If you go back I to our roots that. and so on. Yeah. And we found, they call it the sad clown syndrome. People <laughs> walking through life. And I was one of those mm. that kind of fall into those ruts and your community is defined by your children or your husband, wife, or partner relationship and what that looks like and less about doing things together as a group. Yeah. So F3 stands for fitness, fellowship, and faith. And it's founded in those principles of bringing men together for the invigoration of male community leaders through health and fitness, Mm. right? So that's the first F, which is the fitness part of what we do. And you're right, spot on. It's number one for somebody who is relatively new to the Cary, North Carolina area to meet a community of of just tremendous like-minded people that were driven to be healthy, held people accountable in really positive ways of life, being good parents and good community leaders and so on has been an absolute blessing. So I agree with you 100%. Yeah, it's funny because I think that In life, we tend to overlook the fact, and you mentioned this, where men really do need community. Mm -hmm. And suicide rates are out out of control. And a lot of men do commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And I found that a community like this where you have a healthy group of men helping other guys also have that camaraderie, which I think we all uh, thrive, or how we all thrive. But I think what we all miss out on sometimes, especially if we've had, say, high school or college sports, we've had our, our sort of group. And whatnot. And I think when you're in the workforce, it becomes different and your mm-hmm. responsibilities change and whatnot, your needs change. But having a community that you can rely on for that accountability, for that other camaraderie, other area of growth, I think that we all need as men yeah. emotionally, I think is really invaluable. For sure. And one of the one of the sayings we like to throw around is we won't leave any man behind, but we yeah. certainly won't leave you where we found you. Mm. It's the principle of bringing people up and pushing you to just be better in all phases of life from both fitness, but as a family leader, but also a member of the community, because we yeah. you know, obviously we do a lot of community-based outreach too. So yeah. uh, I completely agree. It's A lot of people find that in their church circles and things like this adds a couple other elements. Of course, we're a faithful-based organization as well, but we welcome all faiths. Yes. And I think it's one of the beautiful things about it yeah. is a lot of the people you get to know are from such diverse backgrounds, from all levels of like senior executive type leadership, yeah. all the way down to just people that work normal jobs and are entrepreneurs. Yeah. So it's really unique and it's been a tremendous blessing. 
Yeah, I have never felt a group so inclusive in a while. And that's been really cool about that. And like yeah. you said, very diverse group of guys, all different backgrounds. And that's been really cool. Yeah. Happy or Chad. Yeah. Happy is your F3 name. That's Mine right. is the situation for the, everyone out there who doesn't know. But Chad, can we talk about your journey as far as like the things you've had as far as injuries go mm -hmm. as a as a runner, as a hybrid athlete before we saw you? Sure. As we talk a little bit about that kind of my fitness journey, one of the things about that workout group is there's a lot of different variables of people uh, of who push each other in different ways. For years, I just stopped running. I thought because I had like runner's knee in my 30s, I'd never be able to run again. So I just stopped. And then as I got into more and more workout regularly, my body got stronger. I was One day I was able to run three miles and then I was running five and then 10 and so on. So what that really translated into, especially with a lot of the people around me that were really motivating it, that I see on a regular basis, is it really started to push to like harder and more and more difficult things. Yeah. So that kind of evolved over time to a guy who was running maybe 10, 12, 15 miles a week to a guy who's running 40, 50 miles a week. Next thing you're doing, what we call is completely stupid and utterly pointless things, which are like really high intensity, long-term things, or in my case, ultra marathons. And as that happens, I joke because there was phases of development. For a year and a half, there was just a constant phase of ache somewhere. It moved up one leg, then down the other, and went back around until my body just settled in. And I never paid attention to the, the kind of warning signs that there was probably <laughs> going to be something wrong at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so before I came and saw you, what I would typically do there is I would, when things got really rough, if I was training for a big event or for a relay or something that was going to take a tremendous amount of time, and I really felt something going wrong, I'd go see another PT or my chiropractor and just treat some symptom related things, especially yeah. the other PT clinics and so on, as I refer to as keeping the wheels on the bus, right? <laughs> just keep the wheels on the bus, get me through the race. And when it's done, I'll take some time off. Yes. And where that really bubbled up before I took the opportunity to come talk to you more about it was this past year as I was training for my springtime is when I do my big events. Yeah. <clears throat> so I typically have a workup race, which in this case was the Uari 40 mile trail race All right. before my big race, which this year was the Umstead 100. And so there's a three to four month window where my training goes up big, yeah. right? And right about the time I was finishing Uare, I noticed a problem setting in on my foot. Mm. I mean, I've had plantar fasciitis before in my right yeah. foot. That's what stopped me from running years ago. Yeah. But this one was different. But it was one of those things where it wasn't debilitating and I was able to work through it. Plus it was like, I can't take time off because between that race and the next one, there's only six weeks. <laughs> Got to pile the miles on. And similar situation where about a week and a half before the race, I found myself like the ache was getting to something where I really couldn't run it off in a couple minutes. It was affecting every day, getting out of bed every morning. Mm. So I went to the old school PT yes. and I said, keep the wheels on the bus. <laughs> so I got through the race, which is a good thing. Wheels stayed on the bus. But then I found it took two weeks off. It wasn't getting better. Mm. Worked out a little bit, took another two weeks off. It wasn't getting any better. It actually was getting worse. The, the less I was doing things, I was like, okay, I have a real problem. And some people that I really look to in my circle obviously had experience with you and I yeah. knew you personally in this event as well, but never came and saw you. And these are people that I trust are like, we've actually improved these things. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, now's the time. I can see Jared. <laughs> That's, <right. laughs> That's awesome. So it sounds like you, you tried the, and I like that you say old school, cause I think we're all part of the old school approach before, but obviously, unfortunately there are a lot of PT practices that stay in the old school kind of ways, traditional approach, mm -hmm. and they don't evolve or they don't use any kind of cutting edge technologies to actually get people to get an accelerated result, which is what we're trying to do. Like our goal is, yeah, let's drill, treat the symptoms with our tools, but let's find the root cause of why yeah. we're having these in the first place. Yeah, they kept uh, the wheels on the bus. Yeah, exactly. Right? I'm not young anymore, and mm -hmm. I enjoy what I'm doing, and like not being able to do my normal routine, even post-recovery for long periods of time, actually messes with my head a lot. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to be able to do this for a lot of years. Yes. So I got to actually deal with this now. I'm so glad you said that, because a lot of guys in our age group, like that's what we, we just want to stay in the game for as mm -hmm. long as we can. And when we start seeing issues like you, did you start getting worried about what was going on with you? Big time. Yeah. Typically like an overuse type injury. Yeah. Like even after like years prior where I would have the typical overuse type strains and inflammation and so on, give it two and a half weeks, maybe three, it's gone, ease back in, the world is quote unquote rest. Yes. <laughs> and it, this wasn't happening. Yeah. And I love what I do now. And so I was like... 
And as I was hearing people talk about similar problems, we have a friend, Scott Gordon. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Who had a very similar problem with his foot that I, it turned into like a bones, a heel spur. Yes. And the way he described that scared the hell out of me. I'm like, there's no <laughs> way I'm going through that. So I'm going to theory now. That's so awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you felt the urgency. Tell us what your experience was like when you came in. Was it different from the old school places that you've been to? Yeah, for sure. Number one, the old school places, and again, good people. Yeah. Like you said, they, they help get you back in motion. But I, what I really liked when we first got here and we had our sit down, was you really looked at, at the body as a whole, but more importantly, isolated that the problem I was having in my foot was being structurally driven by other things. Now, other PTs will talk about that, but I really liked how specific your tech kind of showed it. You remember like my glutes were shut out of the equation, which right. was affecting my back and my leg and all my calves, of course, which yes. of course all leads down. And it's the first time other than sitting down with somebody and saying, we, we want you to do these types of exercises. And I'm going to do this type of therapy that it, it clicked mm. that I was able to see, okay, there's a bigger issue at play here. So yeah. right out of the gate, I was like, this is a, this is the place that I at least bought into what I could focus on to, to, to try to improve. That's awesome. Yeah. So since you've been here, obviously you did some crazy races recently too, but what was your progress like when you started working with us? So again, you think back to my last race was the beginning of April. And so I, I came in here towards the last third or fourth week of May. That's yeah. how long I'd been just out of regular commission. Really worried because, of course, as you mentioned, I, I had in the fall, I typically do a relay race in the mountains with friends of mine. And it's just tremendous amount of fun, especially this F3 circle that I'm part of. And I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to keep it together. Yeah. And so <laughs> I remember as he started working on me, I was like, man, this is easy. Minus, minus Megan's approach to the strength training, yeah. which by the way, I think she's a little sadistic, which I love <laughs> because she, I think she enjoyed just yeah. how uncomfortable I was in those exercises. But the therapy part seemed easy. And I was reflecting on that the other day and I'm like, it's not normal that when you were putting needles into my feet that it wasn't uncomfortable. Mm. And then by that like third week, yeah. it started to become very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I remember something you'd said, like you, you'd said to me that I have to trigger an acute response. Yeah. And I really didn't realize the levity or the, the, the <laughs> weight of that situation, to say better. Yeah. And, yeah. and th then I started to actually not look forward to almost coming against. I'm like, this is going to really hurt for a minute. And then when the therapy happens, it's good, but getting it's those funny. needles in isn't <laughs> great. And I realized that was actually the blessing piece. Yeah. So it's really been a cool experience in that. That's awesome. We did the needling. We also tried the shockwave with mm -hmm. you too, and that was helpful, it seems. Yeah, yeah. I love the shockwave. Yeah. It, I, listen, I, I, the therapy parts are always fun. In fact, like, minus the, the actual part where they're electrified and the shockwave, I actually enjoy. It actually mm. feels good. I love yeah. the muscle yeah. stimulation and so on. Yeah, but so we did that. We did the blood reflection, uh, blood restriction. We yeah, did blood flow uh, restriction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, that was a little torturous. <laughs> but I also really enjoyed. You know, you made it easy, and Megan especially made it easy to bring those exercises home with yeah. the pictures that they would send, the instructions, and pick the ones, just something every day, yes. or a couple somethings every day to keep that going. So it was really helpful. Yeah, I'm so glad you talked about that exercise part because we really value trying to make a very cu customized, personalized program for our clients. As opposed to back in the day where we, has to, we used to have stick figures on paper and just sh share a sheet with you. Yeah. But we want to make it so that it's something that you can actually do daily and stick to because we know that the long-term benefit of doing a program over time will lead to long-term outcomes where you can sustain the benefits you gain in physical therapy. Yeah. And it's actually stuck. It's funny because as I was getting ready for the relay race, I was starting to feel tightness in my lower back again. And you could tell that my glutes were disengaging again. And I was like, okay, I haven't done enough of these glute exercises yeah. in the last couple of weeks. So get back into it again. Yeah. And now I just find myself at different times of the day, standing up and doing this exercise. Or, oh, nice. Or, or, I'm so proud of you. I have to, man. You've got me discipled out now. That's so. good. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And so let's talk about you getting in back out of pain to get mm -hmm. into the to the relays race that we did at Blue Ridge. Yeah, so that was the the part that was really the most exciting for me was you have to think back to a race in early February and then of course the big race in April which fortunately wasn't painful but afterwards the, the effects were really quite bad. So you're talking about a probably three and a half almost four month period where I was not feeling good in my feet all day, every day. Mm -hmm. I could work through it. I could run up to the point where the stiffness would go away, but when it was done, it would come back. And by by really the third week that I was in here seeing y'all, that really had started to subside a lot. There was still a little bit of ache in the yeah, heel, that sure. little heel point pain and discomfort, I guess I would say not pain. And fourth week, it was basically gone. That's right. Yeah. And then by the beginning of July, really the second week of July after the holidays, I noticed that I was out running and I noticed I've had these kind of yoga balls and, and different balls I have yeah. under my desk all the time, just constantly rolling under my feet to keep things stretched. Yeah. I'm pushing on them and that heel pain isn't there anymore. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was like, and you just 
didn't notice that it went yeah. away, but I noticed that it was gone. Yes. Right. So it it definitely changed the quality of, of things. Obviously, for not only to be able to enjoy my training leading up to yeah. that last race, but coming out of it, yeah, I, just a regular recovery regular aches and pains but nothing down there oh that's really cool yeah. actually i didn't know that yeah that's awesome so good how long was the blue ridge really by the way i was 206 miles uh, there, six man team we right? actually did seven seven yeah. yeah we had a seven man team i did about 31 of those over that's six amazing. different runs it was a good week we, it's like what it's we've done it now groups of us groups that i've been with four years now in a row and it's it's tremendous camaraderie but yeah, it's, it's a fun 29 30 hours together in a van oh, with a bunch of amazing. guys amazing yeah. I'm so cl I'm glad that, and actually we had a number of RF3 guys come out in preparation. I yeah. think everyone got through the race. Half my straight. team, I think, was in here yes, exactly. yeah. <laughs> So the cool part is that you were able to run all that distance, and the only thing that was left over was the regular aches and pains you would assume after a race, yeah. but not the original pain that you had. Oh, yeah, nothing That's at all. Awesome. That's actually been the greatest part about this, because, again, if you think back to earlier this year, coming out of URA, going into Umstead, that pain was just there. Now, yeah. it was also there when I was training and so on, so I entered this race without it. But I've noticed while we focused on all the muscles around, it's also made me a bit more deliberate when I'm doing different parts of runs. So like something like one of my legs was a was a four, it was a really short one, it's like four and a half miles. Yeah. But it was down a huge hill. Oh wow. Typically that's gonna that's gonna tear me up. Yeah. And I found myself getting forward on the balls of my feet, yeah. landing different ways and, and so I had some aches and, and, and discomfort after doing back to back oh, sure. to back to back yeah. runs over twenty nine yeah. hours. But but no overuse. That's awesome. So that's yeah. been great. That's yeah. awesome. If there are, are any runners or hybrid athletes out there, or maybe even some guys from F3 community who might be on the fence about coming in to see us, what would you tell them to encourage them to see us? First off, it's hard to say this and understand what this really means, but if you can get there before the problem's a real problem, yes, obviously ideal, definitely. right? I didn't. Mine was a real problem. <laughs> so a little hypocritical in that statement, but that was actually the message I shared with guys that were on my team that actually did make it in here. Guys that were struggling with hips, legs, yeah. knees, or glutes or hamstrings. And like the minute something feels off, off, right. Yeah. You, you, like, get, address it. Yeah. Especially, I, I guess I would say this is a little biased in my age, but at, at my age and a good chunk of these people are like late thirties, early or even later forties. Like I am, you run into getting better by itself is a relative term. <laughs> and it just means if I <laughs> haven't really said. addressed the problem, because yes. really I wasn't, I wouldn't realize you came, I came in here. I wouldn't realize that my glutes aren't firing. I look at you and Jerry and I'd say, I do like hundreds of squats a week. Like, how are my glutes not firing? I'm sorry. See this picture, see this video, your glutes aren't firing. And so whatever, these muscles are working just fine, exactly. overworking. And so if I'm not going to address that problem, I may make the ache go away, but I'm going to have a, a problem later. Yeah, so. and you said it so beautifully because I, I love the off-off because there's going to be normal off that you're going to feel after training hard or whatever yeah. we're all going to feel at. At the off of it, well, that's different. And you mentioned before, well, that pain that I have is a little bit different than what I would expect that's from right. act activities. That's right. So if you're out there wondering when it's good to time to see something, number one, as Chad mentioned, before something happens is when we can address things very quickly. Because once pain happens, things start to change. And if, the longer we wait, the longer it takes for things to go away. So I would heed Chad's advice here. 100%. I wish I would have been about a month earlier, if not more than that. Because the beautiful thing I really, I'd like to share, I think would help the people listening to this is I came in here and I recovered while being active. I, I didn't yeah. take any other time off. I came in here on days, sometimes not long after I was either at a boot camp yeah. or did a run and I didn't have to shut things down. Yeah. You probably would have preferred I did perhaps I mean, a little bit. <laughs> I'm a little stubborn, yeah. but no I was way. still able to get pain free while yeah. building strength and still maintaining at least a level of interaction that, that kept me emotionally and mentally where I wanted oh. to be. So that's one of the things that I really like the most because I have always feared the idea of repair yes. and therapy, meaning Gotta stop. taking time off. Yes. Right? You think of like having surgery and having to wait. Yeah. This that was this was actually one of the things that kept that I'm most grateful for was able That's to do awesome. it on the move. Yeah. yeah, I'm so glad you said that because uh, we get a lot of uh, runners and hybrid athletes coming in saying that oh my doctor told me to stop, and as you had said, sometimes stopping doesn't do it for us anymore mm -hmm. as as we get older. And so what we try to do is just find try to find ways to keep people in the game while they're recovering so that they don't have this fear, especially when you have a race. I've been through this myself where it's, you have a race coming up, you have a little tweak and you're like, oh my gosh, you have to stop and that sort of thing. And then you're also training and putting on the miles. What we try to do is just try to modify things a little bit so you can continue training and competing in your races. Cool. Finally, if you were to say three words or maybe two words that you think of what comes to mind when you think of Next Level Physio of our team, what would you say the, the, those words would be? Top shelf. Top shelf. <sighs> Top shelf. Yeah. That's the, the best one line I've heard, actually. <laughs> awesome. 
Uh, Chad, happy. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your story. Of course. I'm so glad you're able to get back to all the things you're you're going to do, want to do. And I know you have a lot of races coming. What do you have coming up this fall? Nothing really this fall other than just some kind of supporting some people in some things, which is nice. The fall is when I actually just get back to loving to be outdoors and exercising. Oh, nice. Yeah. Most of my stuff is either is, is springtime. So nothing on the books yet, but something big planned for next fall. Oh, man. Awesome. Yeah. Very excited to be there with you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for tuning into today's episode. It really does mean a lot to us. And don't forget to share, subscribe, or comment if you got at least one or two helpful insights or takeaways to help you get to your next level.